Hi. <laughs> hello, 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 hello. Welcome back to my channel. You guys should probably be welcoming me back to my channel. I know, we're not gonna go there. We're not gonna go there. I was making some paint and I was thinking about like what I wanted to kind of do this month for this channel. Um, and I wanted to keep it a little bit different than the stuff I'm doing over on Instagram because I've been doing a lot of live painting over there lately and I've just been seeing a lot of like little galaxies and things like that. So if you don't follow me over on Instagram, feel free to because I do uh, a couple of live paintings over there per week. So back to this. I was thinking that with the holiday season coming up, uh, it would be nice to do, uh, you know, a little bit of holiday stuff. So today we're going to kick off this little holiday series with painting some watercolor postcards. Yes, not, I mean, you can do this on like regular watercolor cards, but I don't have any at the moment. I only have postcards. <laughs> so we're going to make postcards, but you can transfer this over to like, you know, regular watercolor cards. And I'm going to show you the brand that I use um, when we get this started. But just know this is going to be like a little series of things we can do. I have... Um, one video from last year and I will link it up top and put a link in the description below where I show you how to make some uh, ornaments using wood slices. I'm going to do something a little bit similar this year, but I wanted to try and experiment with like gouache on wood slices and see how those hold up. So we're going to do some of that, you know, this month and the, the weeks leading up to Christmas. And what I did with those ornaments was I put them on um, gifts and I used those as gift tags. They were quick and simple and easy and really, really pretty. So that's gonna be later on down the road, but today we're gonna focus on making some holiday postcards slash regular cards. And um, I hope you stick around and you enjoy this one. And if you do, you know, subscribe to the channel, do your thing, give it a thumbs up, you know, you know what to do. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so I am going to be using these postcards. I got this at my local art store and these are from, God, I, I always forget how to say this, Hanemule? Hanem Honeymoon, but um, I got it for seven dollars because the tin was tented, tented, dented. <laughs> but these are watercolor postcards, and they are cold press. Ugh, let me get them out. Um, so you can see that in the back we have the postcard thingamajiggy. You can throw a stamp here, stick it in the mail. So these are how I'm going to be. Um, painting some little Christmas designs. So for today, we are going to paint um, baubles. I think they're called baubles. Those little round Christmas ornaments that you hang on a tree. That's what we're gonna paint today. And then we'll tackle another subject in the next video. So I took out a few postcards and we are going to be uh, doing a couple of baubles on these. And now I'm going to be using my Sprout Creative handmade watercolors. And these are the watercolors from my brand and I am going to put the colors that I'm using on the screen. I am also going to be using some Copic Opaque White for all of the white highlights on the ornaments and any of the white intricate designs. So I'm gonna be using this and I might also be using a white gel pen. I'm not 100% sure yet, but we're not gonna discount this all together. But since I'm showing you my supplies, I'm gonna tell you that I might use this. I am going to be using, aside, um, aside, aside from the matte water, watercolors, I am also going to be using some of, oops, I have it backwards, some of my shimmers uh, for accents. Um, and here those are. So again, these are from my line of watercolors. You can use any metallic watercolors that you have when we get to that part. Actually, you can use any watercolors from <laughs> for the mats as well. I am going to be using my trusty circle maker because I cannot draw a circle to save my life. And I am also going to be using a ruler. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is draw some circles on the paper. 
and we're just gonna be using a regular pencil for that. To begin, I'm going to take my ruler and, or my ruler, to begin, I'm going to take my helix maker and draw a couple of circles on my card. And as I stated earlier, it doesn't have to be a postcard. You can uh, do this on a regular card. You can fold a paper and uh, make your own card. However you wanna do this is perfectly fine. So let's make a big one. And then how about a couple of smaller ones? Let's make a small one here or a smaller one here. I should say not small. And, and one right here. Okay, so here we have a few of our baubles or our ornaments. The first thing we're going to do is take a, pick a watercolor. So I think that I'm going to pick a blue watercolor. And I'm gonna start with the blue. And the first thing that you want to do is completely wet the inside of your circle. Now, I don't think that this is 100% cotton watercolor paper, so this may dry pretty quickly. So if you are not working on 100% cotton watercolor paper, you may need to re-wet your paper at some point, which I am almost positive I will have to do as well. So once the inside of your circle is fully wet, and if you are wetting your paper before you start painting, just remember that you don't want any puddles on your paper. You just want a nice sheen. So you see here, there are no puddles on my paper, just a nice sheen of water. And I'm going to take my blue and I am going to start uh, basically tracing the edges of the circle. And if your blues or if whatever color you're using starts to run into the middle, then that is perfectly okay. That's kind of the effect that we're going for. So fully saturate your brush with paint and start outlining Try your best to stay in the circle, but if you're like me, that may not be possible. Okay, once you have done that, rinse off your brush, dry it a little on a paper towel, and we are going to smooth those edges. So just drag your brush along the inside line and pull some of that paint out so that we can smooth it up. This may not be a step that you have to take if you are using 100% cotton watercolor paper, but since this is not, I can already tell that this is not cotton watercolor paper, I'm going to have to do a lot of the smoothing out of the texture myself. So now we have a nice little circle and the next step is to identify where the light is gonna be hitting this. So I think I want the light to hit this right around here. So I'm gonna try my best to leave this area as light as possible. So I'm going to start on the other side and I am going to go in once again with a fully saturated brush and start painting on the other side. You can see as I'm dragging the color in, I'm losing some of that color on my brush and that is definitely what you want. Don't dip your brush back in the paint just yet. We're gonna keep pulling that paint and going around and around the ornament. So go around and around and again, I want my lightest spot to be right around here. 
So I'm gonna leave that area empty or I'm not gonna go over it again, okay? And feel free to even just draw a circle <laughs> and go around it. Um, you just wanna make sure that you leave that area the way it is. I'm gonna go back in and add some more paints. As you can see, of course, my circle isn't 100% <laughs> isn't circular because I apparently don't know how to paint in the lines. That's okay though, that's okay. Okay, we're gonna keep doing this until we have built up the color on the outer edges just a little bit. I'm gonna make it thinner over here because again, here is where my light source is. And if we put the edges in shadow, it gives your ornament a rounder appearance. Clean off your brush and then especially around this area. You can pull a little bit of that in and blend out those edges. If there are any areas that need a little bit more paint, you can do that as well. Touch it up and Remember, I think the key to this is to keep your strokes round. Keep your strokes nice and circular so that it gives the appearance of a round object. Okay, so keep them as round as possible. If the inside of uh, your light source is drying, you don't want any hard spots, just go in with a clean brush and make that circular motion once again. You wanna stay going in a circular motion. All right, so this one is done for now. We're gonna do the same thing with the next two baubles. So you can feel free to pick a different color, stick with the same, same color, however you want to do this. Okay, now that this one has dried a little, I'm gonna go in with that brush and lift some of this paint off of the side. And the way that you do that is you wet your brush, you um, dip your brush in some water, and then you take a paper towel or a napkin like I have here <laughs> and just dry it off a little. And then you can scrub at your paper very, very lightly and lift up some of that paint. Continue to do that with a clean brush and we're just adding a tiny bit of highlight around the side here. Just the tiniest, tiniest bit. Okay. And I'm going to do that as well with this purple one. This one is a little bit more wet than the blue one. 
um, but it should work just fine. We're adding just the tiniest highlight around the side here. If your highlight didn't stay as light as you wanted, at this point you can go in and do this with the same method, scrub some of that paint off. See, it lightens it up a little bit there. And the yellow is still very wet, but you can see that it will still work. You can scrub some of that paint off and we'll do the same thing here. When you're trying to do, um, when you're trying to do a, a more definitive line here, it may be a little bit more difficult if your paper is still wet because the um, paint will want to pull back in. And you can see here, when this dries, you probably won't have, I probably won't have as much of a highlight there because the paint is still pulling back in to the middle because it is still wet. So this is fully dry, kind of dry, and still wet. Okay, now we are going to dry these and move on to the next step. Okay, so the next part is to put some of the decorations on the ornaments. So you can either do that, whoops, <laughs> you can either do that with a white gel pen. So in this case, it's a Uniball Signal or white gouache, acrylic. Um, I This is my favorite, Copic Opaque White. Everyone who knows me knows that this is what I use. So I'll do a couple of examples, um, a couple. I'll do two examples, one with um, the Copic Opaque White and then one with a white gel pen so that you can see that you can achieve basically um, some of the same results. Okay, so for our first one, I'm going to use the Copic Opaque White. And once again, I'm going back to um, the size four. Actually, I think I'm gonna go with a smaller brush. I am gonna go with a size two Princeton Heritage. It'll just give me um, a little bit more of uh, more of some control. <laughs> It'll give me a little bit more control of what I'm doing. There, I got it out. Uh, one of the things that we are going to do for this bobble is I'm going to make some uh, curvy patterns on it. So we're gonna do a pattern here. We're gonna do a curvy pattern here. We're gonna do a curvy pattern here. All right, so let's start. We are going to start over here and sort of make a half circle. So this is kind of showing that the design is kind of going off onto the other side of the bobble. So I'm gonna start with just a thin line and the half circle. And then I'm going to make it um, a little broader. And I'm going to try to keep these uh, <laughs> these lines all the same width uh, around. Wish me luck. <laughs> okay. First, first uh, squiggle down, first pattern down. Next, I am going to come on this side and then we are going to do a swirl-like pattern over here. And again, to begin with, I'm just gonna go very, I'm just gonna go in very thinly and kind of trace out my pattern. And once I have my patterns traced out, I'm gonna go in uh, with a little bit of a broader stroke.
And then finally, I'm going to go in with another one along the bottom. All right, so the next pattern we're going to do is with a gel pen. So for this pattern, I think I want to, I don't know, we're gonna wing this one, let's see. Um, all right, let's do one of these fancy, fancy little stripey, stripey patterns. So I'm going to go diagonal with these curved lines. So I'm curving them just a little and I'm going diagonal. And now I'm going to go diagonal the other way. Okay. So we are curving them just a little. Just a little. Okay, and now in the middle of each line, I am going to add a little circle. Wait. Let me make this line a little bit broader since I messed up there. Okay, so in the middle of these, I'm going to just draw in a circle. And we'll keep this one nice and simple. Okay, there's another bobble. So for this one, I will just do a couple of dots going around here, around the top. We're gonna curve it. And then I'm going to go right from these dots and then make patterns going down following those dots that I just did. So remember, since this is a circle, you want to curve all of the dots, all of the lines. You wanna make sure that everything is on a curve. So there we have those. And now we wait for these to dry before moving on to the next step. We are going to draw, I don't even know what it's called, but those little caps that go on the top of ornaments, I don't remember the name of it. <laughs> but that's what we're going to draw. So we're gonna draw it on, we're gonna draw it with our watercolor. So draw paint. Um, we're gonna draw it with our watercolor. And we're gonna go with one line and you wanna make sure that it the line goes beyond the circle. And for the bigger one, I'm gonna make it a little wider than usual. And then on the bottom, it's gonna be a little jagged because these are never really straight. And then the top is going to be a little bit curved. And we're gonna fill it in with paint. So make sure you pick a metallic watercolor that is very opaque so that it covers up any of the color underneath. Okay. And I'm going to curve these lines out just, just a little bit. Make them a little longer and curve them out. And now we are going to draw a little loop on the top that is going to um, hold the string that uh, attaches the bobble or the ornament to the tree. So we are going to attempt to draw a nice little circle. And 
and there we go. So we're going to do this for all three of them. Allow these to fully dry before moving on to the next step. Once your bobbles have dried, you're gonna take a ruler and draw a straight line <clears throat> from the middle of the loop to wherever you want, <laughs> to the top of the page. If you're gonna draw a blank, I mean, to the top of the postcard. If you're gonna draw like a, um, a tree or something that you're gonna attach it to, just make it stop somewhere. Mine are going to go straight to the top. Okay. And now with that drawn, we're going to go back to our size two brush and back into the bronze. And we are just going to paint over that line. And that is going to be the string. And with that, your first holiday card is done. And now, of course, you can add more embellishments to these. You can add more shimmers to them. You can, um, you know, have the, have the shimmers take the place of the white. You can do so many fun things. Um, I think the key to this is really making sure that you have a good base down, um, a good base on the ball, so a good painting. And then the design, just, you know, do it however you want. Make it look pretty. <laughs> so there you go. Hope you like this one. That was, I mean, that was fairly easy, wasn't it? I, I hope it was for you. <laughs> hope it was. Um, Thank you all for joining me today and for coming back time after time, even though I tell you I'm going to come back and it takes me forever. Thank you for sticking around. A huge thank you to my patrons who make it possible for me to put out all of this content here on Instagram and Patreon um, and for me to continue doing what I love. And if you are not a part of my Patreon, we have exciting things coming up. In October, I sent all of my patrons Patreon exclusive watercolors and that's coming up again in December. So if you want to join, I'll put a link down below. Feel free to join for as little as $5 a month. You can get in on tutorials, free watercolors with every order, a bunch of, of good things. So thank you so much and I will see you all next time. Bye!